Okay, hi there, welcome to our second video in this little series on price elasticity of demand. In this video, we will look at a handful of examples of products and ask whether we think demand from consumers is likely to be price elastic or price inelastic. There's no right or wrong answer, but they all relate back to the key factors influencing the price elasticity of demand, which we covered in the previous video. I hinted that the number of close substitutes in the market is probably the most important factor determining the coefficient of elasticity, but there are many factors that you could bring into play depending on the particular context and the product itself. Okay, here we go. So I think there are eight fa eight examples to work through, and for each, we'll you can press the pause button and, and think about whether you think demand is likely to be low price elasticity, a coefficient of elasticity of demand less than one, or perhaps high elasticity where the coefficient is greater than one. First example, the demand for peak time rail travel. What do you think about this one? In class, we thought that typically rail commuters tend to have a fairly price inelastic demand. You know, they have to travel from home to work and back again at peak times. There are relatively few close substitutes. I mean, taxis, bus services, you could use your own private car, but each involve a, a substantial cost. Um, so we thought the demand was fairly inelastic here for commuter travel at peak times. That said, uh, we are seeing quite substantial changes in the transport market at the moment as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, with many more people now working from home, particularly maybe two or three days a week. They're staying at home and not traveling. Uh, they're certainly commuting less frequently, judging by the, the data on ticket sales. So perhaps there's a, a change in the kind of peak off peak demand price relationship. What about the demand for soft drinks? Inelastic or elastic? What do you think? Again, we discussed this in our class and here are some of the thoughts we came up with. Uh, our, our perception was that demand is likely to be more price elastic in this market. There are many competing products in the market. Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper and many others, including own label brands offered by supermarkets. Uh, so there are many close substitutes. The cost of switching is essentially zero. And those two factors should make demand pretty price elastic. That said, buying uh, you know, soda drinks and things and uh, bottled drinks is a relatively small percentage of people's monthly budget. So the price isn't fundamental to the purchase decision. And many people, of course, do have a strong brand loyalty to Coke Zero or Diet Pepsi, for example. And that might typically would lower, bring down their price elasticity. Here's a third example I, I threw at my students, the demand for protein porridge pots. We're seeing a, a growth in the market in sort of single use porridge pots uh, and also in other products, including things like yogurts and uh, and uh, other, other, other kind of consumables. What do we think here? Demand price elastic or inelastic? Have a think about that yourself. Well, we thought uh, that because there are an increasing number of closed substitutes in the market, uh, you know, from the, the usual ones made by the big manufacturers, there's Umph, there's Mama, uh, there's Tate and Lyle, there's one, one or two others. We think that the, as, as the number of substitutes goes up in the market, in a sense, as the market becomes more saturated with competing products, then demand might well become more price sensitive. There are many suppliers trying to break into the market. And if you've got choice, it tends to make demand elastic. My fourth example is this one. What do you think? Is demand for five guys burgers price inelastic or price elastic? Have a think about this one. Five guys, of course, is coming to the UK, but they're successful from the United States. Uh, we know that the fast food market itself, takeaway burgers and things, is saturated with many competing suppliers, which suggests on its own a fairly high coefficient for elasticity. That said, uh, there is a degree of bland loyalty in the market. Five Guys has positioned itself deliberately, I think, as a relatively expensive option for those wanting a, a burger. It certainly is at a, at a different price point from the standard Mackey D's burger or from Burger King or from other flippers. So you could make a case for ha perhaps for saying that uh, Five Guys has deliberately increased their price, raised their price, because they know that demand is not particularly elastic. 
Here's my next example. What do we think about the elasticity of demand for, let's say, an espresso virtuo coffee pods? A lot of people have these in their home and obviously in the offices as well. What do we think for this one? Well, in class, we argued about the lock-in idea that once you've bought a particular type of coffee machine, some pods are compatible across machines, but, uh, but many machines don't have that degree of compatibility. So one argument is that once you've bought a particular brand of coffee maker, then essentially the consumer can be locked in to buying a particular type of capsule, which would then make the demand for each capsule fairly pricey and elastic. And, you know, regular coffee drinkers, the people who have their Nespresso once or twice a day, or have habitual consumption. Uh, so that would suggest a low price elasticity. So two people who are relatively happy with a subscription model, you know, they literally buy per month. And if, if the cost went up a few pence or so, they probably wouldn't change their demand at the margins. What do we think about this next one? The demand for over-the-counter painkillers. Over-the-counter painkillers are those which you can buy without the need for a doctor's prescription. So what do we think here? Have, have a think about this one. Again, we discussed this in class quite a bit. The intuitive answer, which I don't think is necessarily wrong, is that demand for painkillers per se is price inelastic. You know, you need them at key times. You've got a migraine, for example. You've got got some back pain or something or some toothache. You know, you need to buy some painkillers. The purchase is a, is a necessity. Single packs, probably a fairly small percentage of income. If it's three ninety nine, you're going to buy it. If it's four twenty nine, you're still going to buy it, aren't you? So it's pretty price inelastic. That said, there is likely to be competition between brands. And in this situation, the generic product has an inelastic demand. Perhaps brand competition within the product makes demand more price sensitive. I think we've got two more. Let's finish with these two. What do we think here? The demand for veterinary services. Picture of a lovely lab there. What do we think about the elasticity of demand for veterinary services? Again, an intuitive answer is that pet owners absolutely have an incredible attachment to their pets. And at times of stress, of need, uh, they will pay virtually any price for essential treatment. So you can make a case for saying that demand is strongly price inelastic. The vet's bills will be paid because the animal, the pet, means so much to us as owners. Again, that said, demand for individual pet insurance is likely to be more price elastic. There are many competing insurance policies which you can choose. So the demand for the insurance policies often more price sensitive people searching around for the best deal finally uh, and thanks for working all the way through these examples hopefully you found this useful what about the demand for pay-per-view sports events topical in the news at the moment particularly with the premier league's decision to bring in a 14 pound 99 per match ppv pay-per-view for non-televised games what do we think here Again, we we discussed this in class and our, our intuitive answer is that the demand is fairly inelastic. You've got lots of loyal fans. They want to watch their team play. In the absence of alternatives, they're probably going to pay for live PPV. But there has been a hugely, strongly negative fan reaction to the Premier League 1499 offer. I think they're revisiting that and maybe we'll come back with a, a lower price. Uh, people are looking for alternatives, including illegal streaming, of course. And uh, there has been quite a bit of kickback from consumers, which does suggest a fairly strong price elasticity of demand. And that could be one reason why the Premier League clubs may well reverse their decision and offer a PPV offering service at a lower price. OK, there we go. There were some factors affecting the price elasticity of demand for certain products. The key thing really when it, in the exam, if you're given the context, a particular market, a particular product, go back to your key factors and, and, and consider which of them are most relevant to a particular situation and uh, you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, thank you.